Butt down the hatches, people. It's time to go back to networking with another network install. Welcome back to Geek Smart, and we're going to do another uh, wonderful. Well, this is another mesh system uh, setup. Now, this is a uh, well, you can see is uh, two individuals. You can buy these in sets as well. They just happen to send me two um, of the single packs. Not that it matters because they're all the same product. So, uh, this is the Gryphon Guardian or Gryphon Guardian or Gryphon G R Y P H O N Gryphon, right? Uh, the Guardian. This is their mesh uh, Wi-Fi security router. I'm interested to see how this works. Um, obviously, it's going to be a similar setup that we've had in the past. We're not going to get all crazy. Let's bring it in. Let's take one out of the box and see what comes with well, the identical. So we'll just open one up, see what comes with it, and we'll get the setup started. Best dad ever. Uh, oh, wait a second. This one did... Oh, it has... Oh, look at that. Maybe I already opened that. Well, I'm going to set it this way so you can actually see. I don't remember opening it, but that's all right. All right, so we have Ethernet connection, LAN connection on both sides. So obviously that's going to be our wide area network connection. Power, and then we do have a small reset button. Uh, very slim in its setup there. There is a QR code on the bottom and just the MAC address. No username, passwords, or anything like that on there. Underneath, we have Ethernet cable. And power cable. So that is all we need to set it up. Uh, that should be duplicated in the second one. What we're going to do is we're going to go back there. We're going to unplug my modem. Um, I'm going to unplug everything, get it ready. And then what I'm actually going to do is like before, like um, on, if you've watched my other videos, um, the my my uh, cable modem is actually going to plug into the internet here. So that's going to be your provider. That's where your internet's coming in from. Um, and then the local internet report here, that can go to a computer, can go to any product that you, you would hardwire. I'm actually going to wire this to a network switch that I have, and then it can actually uh, broadcast across the switch. So um, that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go back there. I'll show you the, basically just a quick video of, of what's back there, and then we'll get to setting it up. Okay, so we are back here in the back room. I have my modem. I did unplug the modem from power as well as also unplugged it from my existing system that I have right here. Um, so we're gonna bypass that obviously and go directly out of the modem. So right now I just have my modem, nothing plugged into other than the coax cable coming from the cable company. Plug the ethernet cable that actually came with the Gryphon. Uh, Gryphon. Um, and then I'm gonna plug it into the internet port, like I said before. Um, not the LAN port. The LAN port would be if I connected it to my switches down below here. So I'm gonna just set this up here up top. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to plug in the modem and let it start booting up. And then I'm going to plug in the power to the, the new router. So hopefully I can get this in there. There we go. Plug that into the power settings here. And now we're going to give it, you know, three minutes or so to get everything booted back up. Uh, I'll probably it won't start the next part of the video until my modem reconnects to the internet. So I actually have internet going to it. So we'll give it a few minutes and then we'll be back with the app setup. So I, I will say this real quick while we're waiting. If you do want to actually connect a switch to it to give you more ports than this, the one LAN port, like I said, uh, this uh, cable here is just running to one, to one of my switch ports. Um, and I can just plug that back here to the LAN port, which is the second, the second port on there, and just run it down to a switch. Now, if it's a managed switch, you have to obviously correctly uh, do that, which this is. But if it's an unmanaged switch or just a standard switch you got from Best Buy or whichever, easy setup. So um, I will probably put links in the description for a decent like eight or 16 port unmanaged, just standard gigabit switch would be a good addition to this. Okay, so here we are on my phone. The, uh, the Griffin Connect app is what we're gonna actually use to connect to this guy. We're gonna hit open here. And let's see, would like to send you notifications, that's fine. I'm going to create, let's hit create an account, name, user name, which is also your email address, and then a password. So I'm going to do that real quick and I'll be right back. 
So the password does have to contain a one upper, one lowercase letter, an alphabet, and a special character. So just so you're aware. Next, there's my account. I'm going to hit create an account. You receive an email with a code. So let me go into my email and get the code. And it was there when I got in there. So we'll just put in the three digit code that they emailed me. Account verified. Would like to access the camera. That's okay. Locate the activation code on the bottom of your Griffin router and take a picture of it with it or use the, the camera. Uh, so this is one of the, the other router that I'll be setting up with it and you can see what the QR code looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hit the one that's already plugged in. I'll be right back. So I just hit the send code. It, took, it brings up a little uh, window of your camera and then you scan it and it comes up to this. Congratulations on your new purchase. Comes with six months of prepaid active, act, advanced network protection. Sounds good. Ad blocking and everything, huh? Unplug your current Wi-Fi router. We've already done this. Plug in your uh, the new router. It's not online yet. Wait for it to be online. So should be online already. Interesting. And as soon as I turn off the camera, it's online. Right on. Uh, let's make sure I see a blinking white light. Let's do that real quick. That is the blinking white light they're talking about in the bottom uh, center of the router. Okay, yes, I see a blinking light. It's pairing it with this app. Um, three feet or less, so let's get closer to the router. Okay, so it wants me to join the network. I'm going to hit go ahead and hit join and let it do its thing. Uh, I'm about three feet away from it. That's how far I am. So we're right in that, well, they say three feet or less, I guess. But we're pretty darn close to it. I think we're good. So we'll give it a second to do its connecting, and uh, hopefully it goes. So now it's asking if we'd like to find the and connect device on our network, and I'm going to hit OK on that one. I don't know how close the camera is on it. I'm kind of in front of you so you can see what's going on here. Pairing successful. OK, we'll hit OK. Now we're going to create our SSID passwords for our primary and our guest network. Uh, so I'm going to create that one, and the guest I'm going to leave as it is. Okay, well I created a guest just called guest. So I use my primary SSID that I've always used for all of my routers and the same passwords. That, that way all my wireless devices that I already have it saved for that SSID automatically reconnect. So of course if you do this, you just gotta make sure that both the SSID and password have the same um, capital letters and everything, everything is exactly the same. Hit next. It's gonna save the Wi-Fi settings on the router. So it's restarting now. Okay, so please connect this phone to the network. Okay, give me a second, I'm gonna actually go to my settings. Go to Wi-Fi, and it's already automatically connected because it's, a, like I said, the same information. I'll hit okay on this guy. Setup is now complete, done with my setup. Two-step verification adds an extra layer of protection of security, that's always a great thing to do. Um, you have to put in your password to continue, give me a second. Hit continue on that guy. Enter in the mobile phone number. That all right? I'll put my phone number in quick. So I hit send code. It send the code. Let me uh, put in that number real quick. And there it is. And it verifies the phone number. And now internet is on. So we should be good to go. All right, we're gonna continue our setup here and get the second one going. So the second one obviously looks exactly the same as the first. In this time, we're just going to do a Wi-Fi setup. So we're using this as a, basically another point, not doing a wire to it. We're just going to leave it exactly like it is. Plugged it in, let it boot up. Once it boots up, then we'll go into the setup of it. Well, while we're waiting, so this is still, you can see the, the red amber light we're waiting. We're waiting we have to, uh, I think, go uh, flashing white. But in that case, we're looking at the dashboard here. This is, uh, I haven't really done anything yet, obviously, other than going. So we can already see we already have 28 unmanaged devices. Uh, two things. I don't know what the things are. Panasonic camera. Oh, yeah. Camera upstairs. Oh, and Apple Watch. My Apple Watch. Look at that. So, um, so things can be categorized, obviously, as we can see, 28 unmanaged devices. Um, and I wonder if you can go in, let's say, um, oh, where are we at? We can look at any of these, I guess. doesn't really matter. Uh, Brian's iPad Pro, device type, tablet. So it actually picked that up pretty easily. Signed user, I can assign um, myself as a user, I guess. So. 
Sa uh, if we want to turn Safe Search on, I don't really want that on mine. We can turn Ad Blocker on for that device. Uh, and obviously these are the premium things that you get for free for six months or whichever it is. Um, 18 plus you can change the age group. Um, oh, so you just choose in here. Look at that. All right, cool. Uh, and allow VPN, unfiltered, unrestricted. So you can choose whatever you want within these as well. That's, that's kind of cool. New user added. And then you can obviously go through and just keep everything that attaches to your network. Uh, you can attach to a person. So that's kind of neat. All right. Well, that's our, that's flashing amber. Maybe that means it's ready. So let's let's see. It's probably in settings. So add mesh repeater. So there we are. So in the settings, we hit add mesh repeater. Uh, we're going to scan the activation code. So hit scan. This is what it looked like before, where you just saw my camera. And if I flip this guy over and I scan the QR code, Back up a hair. There we go. Set up. All right. We'll hit next. Uh, next to the base station, attach the Ethernet cable provided from one LAN port to the repeater. Next, power up your from power mesh repeater. So you do have to wire it in order to set it up. So let's go. Uh, I guess wire it in. So here's how I'm going to do it. I have it down here. It's plugged in into the internet port of the new the repeater that we're doing. And I just have it plugged into one of my ports here on the switch. Now this switch is plugged in to the LAN connection on the primary router. So it's the same thing essentially if I plugged it from the LAN port to the internet port on the repeater that we're setting up. So uh, I'm just going to go through a switch because I want to make sure it works through a switch as well. Should, shouldn't have any option or uh, any problem So because it should be going off that. So that's what I'm going to do and we're going to head back over to setup. So I did double check the light on the on the repeater. It is flashing white, just like the original one did. So we're gonna hit next. See if it's uh, on, it says it's not online. Let me give it a second. This time I won't just uh, give up on it real quick. I'll let it sit and spin for a few seconds. All right, so it's online. When ready to pair, light will blink white. It is blinking white. I already double checked that. Configuring the repeater. So we'll give it a moment. So obviously being plugged into it, it's going to pull all the information directly off the main one right into the secondary one. So it should set itself up is what I'm assuming. We'll give it a second. So we did just get a thing. The firmware is being updated. It's going to take 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to stop the video. We'll be back as soon as it's done. I won't do anything until we're ready to come back. So I gave it some time and I woke up the phone and it says configuring repeater. This may take up to 90 seconds. So I'm going to give that time, but I just want to say what it showed after I kind of came back into the app after it being silent for a while. Okay, I gave it a couple more minutes and then I came back into it. Repeater, I, I haven't touched anything. I just let the app keep running in the background on my phone. And when I woke up the screen, this is finally what it said. So I'll hit next. Um, let's see, where are we going to set this one up at? I'm going to say basement. All right. If you wish to use wireless mesh backhaul, unplug the Ethernet cable and reposition the mesh router anywhere within the Wi-Fi range of the Graphon base, typically no more than 20 feet. 20 feet seems really low, but it is what it is. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect it, just unplug everything, and then move it over a different spot. We're going to take a peek what it looks like. Okay, so I moved it in a different location of the house. I plugged everything in and gave it a few minutes to boot up. I'll get done with my setup here. Okay, so now I want to see where do we see the various devices. It's got to be in here somewhere, right? Okay, I did find it. It's under network, and and some you may I I guess I may have had to hit the refresh to see what's actually on here. So you can see we have 28 devices on the base. One device connected to the mesh router. But we are connected, and right over here we can actually see the signal strength that we're actually on. Um, I wonder if we actually click on this guy. We can actually just restart the repeater. We can change the location, at least in the app, what it, what it is, or what it's labeled as. Um, and see the information on the actual item. Um, we can even see, a, let's do a network speed test. Let's see what it actually comes down at. Um, this is obviously pinging from the internet to the main base station. We'll give that a second. Can take up to two minutes. Well, that's interesting. It took the full two minutes, and I wonder if I also have to restart this or refresh this area too. They actually show it. 
Okay, so I, I think they just have some work to do on their app because, uh, like before, I had to kind of basically get it to refresh. Although there's no refresh section here, so I essentially just closed the app, let it sit closed for a few seconds, and then reopened the app, came back to the network tab, and now we can see 238 down, 9 up, which may be right because I am using the upload right now. I am uploading a video, so that would probably be faster if I wasn't doing something using that right now. Um, should be in the, the 30 to 50 category. That said, I understand I am using it. So, uh, but download, I wasn't really doing anything down, just mainly up. We can see the 27 devices. We can see there's two now two devices on the mesh repeater. Um, if we go back to the home, we can see all, like I said, we, we were looking at this before, the different devices. Let's actually come into, again, a different device. Let's go into my MacBook Pro. Um, we can see it's a computer assigned user. We can obviously within any of these, let's actually head over to users. We actually have, I put one device under me right now. I can suspend now, suspend in five minutes or in 15 minutes. Um, so I can change things like that. Hit the settings tab. And then we can change the settings that I already had set up. We can go back to those. And what's the other one here? Manage site access. So we can actually block certain sites. So let's say your kid, you didn't want your kids going on YouTube or something. You can do that. Um, so we can actually see screen time. How basically, if you you know if they have a how many how much uh, data use per day, you can do that in here rather than on the device. Um, so that's actually pretty functional, pretty useful to be honest about it. Block new devices. So if you have all the devices that you want on there, hit that, and no new devices can connect to your network. That's pretty pretty nice. With stealth mode, turn on stealth mode. Disable the notifications to the user when a site access is blocked or internet is suspended device cleanup clean so basically clean guest devices so if you want to erase that guest devices off of here you can do that clean on un unmanaged devices so anything that you haven't linked to something at one point or another you can clean those out as well so that's I mean a lot of things that are you know I probably will never use but are useful uh, you can create a secondary admin account so that's nice as well so if you want both parents in the household or something to have an administ administrator administrator account you can do that even unpair from there as well so there we are we're fully set up firmware updates obviously important as well and you can even turn on automatic updates so that's functional that's very there is a it looks like a, a newer version on one of the devices still available I, i'm assuming that's on the primary one because we did update the firmware on the secondary one and i'll do that later but we are up and running so i'm sure if you were watching or pay attention to the app you probably saw that there is a 15 dollar amazon gift card at the top how to get it essentially it's a referral if you get somebody else to actually uh, order uh, your friend gets uh, five percent off the website order and you are gifted with a fifteen dollar Amazon gift card so they do offer that um, so that's an option um, that said this information you know this the setup was fairly straightforward um, I will say that the app is a little laggy and updating so you know if you notice that it's something just close the app down reopen it and I mean, not just, not just, you know, get out of the app and go back into it. Literally, you know, swipe it up, close the actual app completely, get it off, and then reopen it together, and then it, it seemed to work just fine. Um, otherwise, just give it time. You know, give it time to fully do its thing before you try to go on to the next step. It was pretty slim, simple, pretty easy, so I got to give them that. And some of the features look pretty promising. Hopefully, it, uh, it pans out in the end, and I will post a full write-up review or a full video review on this once once I have my uh, some time in on it and actually using it so I will put links to everything not only this product here but I will also link to at least uh, a, an, an 8 or a 16 maybe both um, port switch an unmanaged switch down below a 1 gig switch so uh, I've always used uh, well I've had a few in the past so I'll put a couple options down there if you if you're looking to do something with this and you want to add more ports or for anything else, I'll put that down below. But also, obviously, links to this. So these are just two identical products. Um, we just set up two. One is a primary, one is a repeater. Um, so yeah, dual zone, uh, or, or dual band, uh, AC1200 for its speed. So a little bit lower than some of the other ones I've done recently. However, um, yeah, at the price point, hopefully it's a, it's a good option. Keep, uh, keep track and keep open for the video review coming soon. Otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, post those below. Subscribe, share, like the video if you can. And we'll see you back here on GeekSmart for another future setup and tutorial, whichever you'd like. So we'll see you here soon. Thanks for stopping by.